Hello one and all and welcome to the latest episode of Behind the Glass. This week I am joined not by Tony from Graveled Car Sales. Thank God. But by Paul Wallace from Hello. Supercars of London. Thank God is such a good thing to say actually. I was going really sick of Tony's <laughs> attempted humour. Um, you join me in the living room of my house. I still haven't sorted out my studio office yet as a dedicated podcast space. So instead we're in my living room. I hope my girlfriend doesn't get back from work and <laughs> walk in. Oh, I'm shagged. Oh, well, no, I'm not. Anyway. Um, Great choice of words. Thank you so much. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the new format of Behind the Glass. Um, you were a guest on the original format of I Behind was. the Glass. Yeah, you were quite sleepy that day. Oh, yeah. Very, I was very tired, <laughs> which is why I've decided to have a little nap before this podcast. Oh, thank you so, so much. So that I am ready. Ready and raring to go. And by <laughs> nap, you mean a monster. <laughs> Hashtag ad. <laughs> down a bit because you have a loud laugh <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you so i want to kick things off with i think probably with the most important topic when it comes to us two these days the cars. fact that yes cars oh. <laughs> <laughs> no but the fact that six months ago we on oh no, a nine months ago let's be realistic okay. we were both in two of the newest supercars out on the road a yeah. lamborghini Huracan and a mclaren 540c we were now I'm in a Ferrari 360 from 2002 <laughs> and you're trying to buy a Lamborghini Mercilago. I know. How What's times happened have to us? Just what has happened to us? Why do you think we've done such a U-turn in our in our car buying ways? I tell you what, I'm going to start with the U-turn that I've done because do you remember uh, in life 12 months ago I was so f pro new cars. Yeah. I still am in a way, like the modern classics to me are right at the... You said 2008 was your cutoff? Anything before 2008, 2008 was you just didn't Yeah, you didn't care. Because like, I was I'm like, done. McLaren F1, the 458 and everything like that is better. <laughs> <laughs> is that a good way to start this podcast? <laughs> no. <laughs> then you might get ripped no, apart But now, I think but... that it really, kicked, it really opened my eyes when I was driving a McLaren 570S and came across Ferrari Enzo. Okay. And then everyone was like, oh, the McLaren's fast. And I'm like, nah, it's not. And I went on Google and I was like, oh my God. Oh my God, actually These is. new cars are- Too good. Too good. And I think that the U-turn, speaking from my experience, is being having access to all of these new cars, going on these incredible media drives and having the opportunity of experiencing so many fresh cars that are on the market that they kind of all become a little bit blurry. You lose a sense of occasion. But at the same time, manufacturers are trying to weasel out all of these little problems that carts have um, to make them so clinical. They're, they all become very similar because of yeah. that. They're all so good and so capable. Long gone are those, I mean, the Huracan is pretty uncomfortable, but, but long <laughs> gone are those days of people going, oh, I can't drive a supercar more than 10 miles and you can't park it and it's awful in town. They're all brilliant at yeah. everything, you know, and both of our cars were a testament to that. The 540C and the Huracan, incredible. We did long road trips in them. We modified them. We yeah. hooned around in them, took them through town and they were great, but they became a little bland because we were spoiled enough or are spoiled enough to jump into other ones that are just as good yeah so then you lose the reason of behind why your car is so special what mm. like what makes and i couldn't remember yeah. i couldn't figure out why it was more special than anything else it was just costing me a ton of money well the lamborghini hurricane you flick it into comfort mode or strada as they call it and it becomes an audi a3 it's the size of one the steering is as light as one and whilst yes you're a little bit lower and the visibility is slightly less you can drive it like an audi a3 yeah. so I think the specialness of new cars is slowly diminishing the further we get through with all of this new technology. Going back to like 2008 when I was going into London and filming these supercars, like you would see like one Murcielago, a couple of 430s. It was so rare that you would see like a hypercar, like an F50 or an Enzo. Whereas now you go to London and they're everywhere. And it comes down to the fact that they're so easy to drive that anyone can jump in them so they're dailyable yeah the absolutely. Ferrari 918 and all of that lot are dailyable you see them everywhere and we're overexposed in that sense and and we are spoiled because i i still lust after new cars cars come course, out and i'm yeah, like god it'd be yeah. amazing to own that and don't get me wrong if i had all the money in the world i'd probably buy back a 540c yeah we're not slagging off new cars we're just just saying that our taste specific to i think our 
narrative, our storyline over the last 12 to 18 months has changed and progressed so rapidly that we're actually now going backwards in time. Yeah. Because we are chasing this sort of, you know what I think it is? Go on. Do you remember like the first like real supercar experience you had? Not like, oh, I drove a LP640 on track. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, go through YouTube, cool, take my 430 Scud for a test yeah. drive. What was it? Uh, my first proper experience was jumping in a Gallardo around central London okay. for a passenger ride. Okay, what about driving there? Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, my first experience was picking up my R8. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so that's quite... But no, no, no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you got insured? <laughs> but that is quite telling in a, in a sense where I th I'm trying to think back to mine. The Stradale always stands out in my mind, but I definitely... You drove a couple of Ferraris in Italy, right? Yeah, I drove a 458 Spider okay. in Italy. But I think what it is, is we or I am chasing that sensation I got from the first time yeah. I had yeah. that. Uh, and because we're so spoiled, if I, that was my only experience driving a 458 Spider in Italy, I think all I would want in life is a 458 Spider. Yeah. But I've been spoiled now and driven things like a 720S or a Huracan Spider or whatever it might be, a Morgan. Mm. And I'm like, there's so much, they're yeah. all so good. Yeah. But they're not giving me that sense of occasion. You're not putting the, your heartstrings. No, whilst for me, the 360, it, I mean, I nearly died. I need to show you a clip, actually. <laughs> I nearly died at 10 miles an hour yesterday. I'm just going to show Paul this clip whilst uh, whilst he's sat on the laptop. Uh, oh, no, well, I've got rid of the screen. Hold on. This, this will be worth it, I promise you. Because this is what I mean. The car is so exciting to me and so emotive, even when I'm going at, you know, no... Oh, why is this not working? This is this is really not going well, is it? <laughs> hold on a sec, hold on a sec. I've got it on here somewhere. But even when I'm going really slow and not doing very much... You still have a smile on your face. No. <laughs> <laughs> Literally 10 miles an hour pulling into a side street Incredible. and it went sideways. And, you know, that made me feel excited and, uh, you know, I just love it. Okay, that has made me real... Like, it's given me a trigger in the brain. What I've been saying quite recently is cars that want to kill me as i drive them close to the edge is what gets me excited yeah I when you feel like you're on the edge of the car taking control of what you're doing whereas all of these new cars have got so many computers on board that when you come out of a corner you're not sure whether you did that or the car did that the cars now that excite me are the ones where you come out of the corner knowing you did that and Good when point. I okay. drove the Mercy Largo, a bit more analog, basically. Exactly. When I drove the Mercy Largo for the properly for the first time in Los Angeles, I felt the revolutions of the engine in the pedals. Okay. I felt every single. <laughs> Probably because it was broken. Yeah. <laughs> I felt every bump through the steering yeah, wheel, yeah, and yeah. my seat was vibrating and heating up because the engine was getting warmer, mm. and all of that that sort of combines with you sitting in the driver's seat and basically holding on for dear life hoping that you're going to get around the corner just involves you so much more as a driver than all of these computerized cars that are now coming onto the roads but do you think that's because that sort of mid-level supercar the 488s the hurricanes the 650s the 720 or in 720 maybe not but well actually maybe um <laughs> oh, that's a police helicopter flying around my house um but but are we a level two below? Have those the ones that become sanitized? Because, for example, all I hear about with the F12 TDF is that it kills you. Yeah. And a Koenigsegg looks like the most terrifying thing to drive in the world. And the P1 apparently moves around a ton. Like, m maybe we, maybe there are still those cars being made, but they're harder to find and they're not so evident. While, while the general stuff, the accessible stuff, the stuff we're seeing everyone going by because mm. of financing and the fact that the world's a richer place and Instagram is telling us when people buy these cars. <laughs> yeah. For, okay, for example, the GT3, yeah. Tony's new GT3, mm -hmm. did not expect that to be as lively as it was. Really? Really didn't. And it really thrilled me. For a car that, you know, I haven't been a Porsche fan until the last six months, yep. I, I wouldn't have thought would be something that would sort of throw you around. I always thought it would be super planted, and I feel like the previous generation was, but I drove it on pretty warm, on dry days, mm. I'm pretty sure. This car, from the m first acceleration I did, I was like, whoa, <laughs> whoa! Like, uh, and, and so maybe, maybe it's just the majority have become too sanitized. Mm, I believe I believe that's what it is. And okay. I also know that manufacturers are building cars with a wider breadth of ability. And I'm using that phrase from McLaren yeah. because they love that on the McLaren 720s. <laughs> but when you look breadth. at, let's say the LaFerrari, yeah. they could have made that as crazy as the F12 TDF. 
they should have made that as crazy as the F12 TDF, but they didn't because they knew the clientele that was going to be driving it. And they knew that if they did make it that crazy, everyone would bin them. Yeah, S- everyone would die. And then... The it's- TDF is a little bit more of like that. It's a front engined I think it's supposed to have that character. I think so too. I, I think, and I think it, it makes that car a bit more of a halo car mm. than, than, than it, it might have been if it was a bit more sanitized. Yeah. And it's just, an, I find it very interesting, especially from, from your side, that, that with all of the stuff we've been able to do with all these amazing things, you would think that we'd be trying to buy LTs and specialities well, and stuff like that. But I drove an LT yesterday. <laughs> it was pretty special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Okay, I'm sure it is. That, right? was, that was a car that actually sort of got the hairs on my back really properly going and that's what james always said wasn't it yeah Yeah. Uh, i mean but i just i just i find it interesting i'm super happy for me the 360 was such a dream car that it's a car that i I want to try and keep in my garage or my mm -hmm. lineup for as long as possible in whatever shape or form so i see it now that the cayman is kind of like my evolution car and the the 360 will stay there as a banker mercy lager is a little bit of a different beast i suppose Mm -hmm. in that sense but is this something that you want to get out of your system is this something that you just want to like what do you see this as i have filmed almost every single exhaust system on a mercy lager lp640 and it hasn't taken me too long to get into exhaust systems (laughs) but um that to me is all has always been my dream car okay like going right back my love for cars came from f1 it came from following Ferrari and Williams. Funnily enough, we uh, had a similar conversation with Miss Emma Walsh recently <laughs> on Behind the Glass. And, but it was only when, you know, like, because I've now got a five-year-old, now six, nephew, you like kind of cling on to any interest he pays attention to f- around Christmas and birthdays. Sure. So when I paid interest to F1, one of, like my parents got me a car book and I saw the 2001 launch pictures of the Lamborghini Mercy Lago. Mm-hmm. And that's where my love for road cars came from. So Swapped. to me, the Mercy Lago is that car that okay. will always remain in my garage. And I think the exciting thing that I want to try and achieve when I buy one is putting it back to almost factory condition. So like building it backwards. Kind of restoring it slightly. Kind of, yeah. But the exciting thing with this car is that it's not always going to start. <laughs> and that's Welcome to, me, to my world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think like that's something that we have discussed as just an element to a road trip or an element to just it's owning just life. that car. It, it, you know what? It's more of a, a bond. It sounds like it's such a weird thing to stay, say, to spend all this money on a car and then enjoy it when it doesn't work. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know I, I've heard, so you know, oh, why does he enjoy when his car breaks down? But... I don't enjoy it. You I get an, I get it, a lot of pain from it. But there's something about the fact that when I go to find the Ferrari and I walk and you up to it, don't know whether it's going to start. I don't know if it's going to unlock. Yeah. I like I just everything. But but when it does, and when it is such an amazing feeling, such a great sensation. And don't get me wrong, there were plenty of times the McLaren didn't start. I genuinely didn't know if that would start. <laughs> but the problem was I didn't get the emotion back from the car when it was working. Yeah. Was the Ferrari? You know, it, it makes no excuses for braking. Yeah. And and what What's hilarious i've had this engine light thing that a lot of people on social media were sort of like thought was really serious and we're going oh he hasn't shown the car but Probably it's essentially so. turned out mm. i don't know when this will go out and i might film <laughs> another update but from my phone call yesterday <laughs> the engine warning light came on because the oil was too cold right on startup <laughs> because i'd left the car for five days yeah and it's the been freezing goes, in the uk hey, <laughs> it's a car what are you doing? Yeah. So there's me thinking like, oh my God, I've broken my car. There's the internet thinking Sam's car, he's going to sell it now. And it was literally like, the, I mean, so there's a sort of hilarity to it, which I think is kind of enjoyable when you look back. At the time, it's terrifying, but when you Do look you back. Do you want to know a funny story about my Gallardo? Go on. Which was, well, it's quite an archaic car, even though it was a 2011 car. You know, Seb's driveway is really quite Yeah, steep. really steep. So I started Seb's my old driveway, car. If, you don't, Seb's, if you're not a subscriber Seb's of Seb's Seb Delaney. Old, yeah. yeah. So that's quite steep and when i was driving the gallardo up the first time that i'd driven down started the car up drove up and i got this mega oil pressure warning light and i was like what what i've just bought this car what is going on and i freaked out and we went down for lunch i think and and i spoke to tim about it and i said the oil pressure on my car i don't know what to do do i call lamborghini or whatever and he was like oh did it happen on the seb's driveway and he and i said yeah and basically it's because the oil tank 
the oil has obviously gone like, like that, that and the sensor's right at the top. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So like that it could be the smallest thing yeah. that has actually got nothing to do with a problem with the car, but it's just how that car is, is Incredible. built. Incredible, yeah. It's all of these things that are super unique. So God knows where you are in your Mercy Lago story at the time that this podcast comes out. I'm having to pre-record a few of these because I've got some chips coming up and so does Paul, mm -hmm. um, which we will get onto uh, towards the end of this podcast. Um, right now, in the present day, I'm halfway through writing a draft email to VVS. Oh. That, is, that is where <laughs> that I is am in the, in the that situation. Is what's happening. I'm four paragraphs in, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but what we can talk about, because yeah. we know that this will, well, we, know, we hope this will have oh, happened, yeah. oh. because if it's not, I'm going to have to edit this podcast real quick, <laughs> is that you've just made a pretty huge announcement <laughs> yeah. on your YouTube channel. You don't actually know what you would have said at this point, but you know what you were hoping <laughs> to say. This is the weirdest thing in the world. <laughs> trying to talk about the future. Yeah, I I'm apologize. Massive, massively talking in the future right now, because I don't know what words are going to come out of my mouth when I make the announcement video. Top line, what will that video, I, I hope a lot of you will already know this, but what will that video say as a top line? So it is essentially a new direction that I'm taking myself on personally within the automotive world, and that is undertaking the art of drifting. Yeah, I'm like so excited about this and this is something that i've been working on possibly for the last six to 12 months and hopefully my video will explain where this passion and hunger to follow this direction has come from but jesus christ it's a big jump it's a huge <laughs> jump and the thing is when we when you first started telling me about this i was trying to track back in my mind when i saw that passion for <laughs> drifting really you know start to build and there are two times that on. i can think of the first off is the nice time which was probably the purchase of the amg yeah but if we're fair you kind of were already talking about it because when you had the Lambo, you were like, I'm annoyed with Quattro. I want to have rear wheel drive. So I you did were, slide the guy you were a couple already, of times. You, you remember? did. I, <laughs> yeah. I remember. It was terrifying. Sometimes in a straight line. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, but, but, so I don't know what had triggered it because you were already thinking, oh, I want to go a bit sideways. So, so maybe you uh, can think about that. But the other time, which <laughs> was purely the best time ever, <laughs> this is the point where you'd start to get a bit cocky. <laughs> You've been sliding an AMG around for a while. You bought a real-wheel drive Lamborghini because you were like, I'm a drifter. What's the I worst that can happen? I like drifting. And on about day four of ownership, we were on a road trip down to Monaco. It was myself, Paul, James, and Seb. Seb was in the Batmobile. I'm in the 540. James in his L2. We stopped for pizza. It's a very nice lunch. Lovely pizza. And as we're leaving the restaurant, it's basically a T-junction onto quite a big, wide, open road. Lots leave. of tarmac and no traffic. Lots of tarmac, no traffic. And Paul was at the front. And we all have walkie-talkies at this point. I think the other guy's still up at the restaurant. <laughs> yeah. And I'm following Paul down. <laughs> he says, probably the worst thing that anyone can say ever in a car, watch this, guys. <laughs> and I just go, Paul, what are you doing? I can audibly hear him turn traction control off. It was when he pulls out to the road and does a massive spin, lands plonk in the centre of the road when suddenly cars appear and coming. <laughs> Paul, get out of there! Get out of there! Just a cloud of smoke. A oh my god! Proper cloud of smoke. Proper cloud of smoke. Can I just smoke. add that about five minutes before we found this pizza restaurant, I nailed. You did nail. You a did nail. Slide. A power slide, not a drift, but a power slide. I think you then got really cocky. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but it so was the gravel on my tar on my tires. Sure, whatever excuses, slippery. whatever excuses you want. <laughs> I hope now that you have a few more bits of training. But I do think this is mega exciting because at the end of the day, how long can we all f go around filming supercars drive past us on the street? Well, yeah, I, like it's something that I discovered fairly early on in my automotive journey. But it was something that I really sort of it came to the forefront of my brain at the tail end of last year. And I spent a lot of time building towards this that I just am really excited about learning car control to a level that probably will take me so hopefully so far further than I don't know. You never know how long YouTube's going to be around for. You never know how long making videos you're going to be around for. And it's something that I love. And if I could spend the rest of my life doing this and drifting and stunt driving, whatever it is, obviously making videos whilst doing that is the number one and what I cannot wait to document as a journey. But at the same time, looking quite far into the future in terms of 
how I can take my love for cars and supercars, but also make sure that there's a way that I can continue to follow my dreams or just do something that I love doing rather than you never know what what's going to happen in 10 years time absolutely absolutely no i think it's a hugely brave step um for for your own personal safety but also for your career um, <laughs> i think i'll wait till you've had a few lessons and proven before yourself a bit before in jumping car. into any kind of rattly drift car but no i think it's very exciting i think it's very cool i think uh you can head over obviously to paul's channel supercars of london to check out hopefully that announcement video um as yeah, i say I, I really hope that it does go live well i guess some well this will just get delayed i guess if it hasn't so it will it will be live yeah when this podcast goes out it will be live and i think the most ludicrous aim for 2018 is obviously that end goal which is jim carner grid oh yeah so <gasps> every year ken block hosts his own where is it in the world south africa it was south africa in 2017 i don't know what it's happening okay. in 2018 but my goal it's proper need for speed only those who need to know. know. <laughs> <laughs> My goal is to get entry into that and uh, and compete. Which be, I just come and lay banana skins all over the track. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, me. Donkey Kong! <laughs> <laughs> um, amazing. Anyway, big congrats! I say you can head over to all of Paul's channels to find out more about that. I want to shift things a little bit away from the supercars and the drifting and talk about probably one of the biggest moments or most successful moments of our li year last year, mm -hmm. which was the Hot Hatch Tour. Oh, or oh, saloon. <sighs> I mean, I was trying to be nice to you for a second, but yeah, the Hot Hatch Plus Saloon <laughs> Tour, something that we were planning for about six months, took forever to put into place, was relatively last minute. It did, yeah. But went down incredibly well, and we had a brilliant time, yeah. and it was amazing to see the reaction of everybody. I think um, it seemed to be a new format, something that people are really getting behind. And before talking about our sort of plans to continue it, why do you think it was so successful? Why do I think it was so successful? Probably the mistake. It wasn't actually a mistake. <laughs> no, the fact that you bought the wrong car. The fact could that be why it was the, so successful? The fact that I bought the wrong car obviously was such a huge talking point, and it was something that I was more than happy to get behind and jump on the bandwagon and almost take the mick out of my own self because originally i was getting a hatchback we were all going to have hatchbacks we were going to have red hatchbacks yeah and uh no no, no mine was going to be nardo gray oh okay and i declined it because it was the same spec as archie's car sorry you're right okay um, fine. and i didn't want to obviously clash yeah. in terms of his posts and my posts so i asked for a different spec car and I got a saloon. <laughs> Not that that made any difference because my car was obviously leagues above yours. Yeah, in terms it was of a completely different whether, bracket. Whether I had a saloon or a hatchback, it would have been the same It would same have been outcome. a super hatch or a super saloon, which either exactly. one. Exactly. But I think what was so successful about it was the fact that it was so last minute. It yep. was so spontaneous. We had no expectations for it, but we just had so much fun. Yes, we had, we had a wicked time. And also... I think the organization that went into it that was so simple that allowed us to have so much time to film each video meant that none of us were stressing. We were right. all helping each other because we basically just all filmed the entire day and then dumped all of the content to whoever's video was going live that day. For sure. So whilst the person that was hosting the video that day had the stress of editing the entire thing put together, as filming sometimes can be stressful to get everything in before the light fades or whatever it is. Have I got the right angles? Have I got the drone up? Have I got and Especially when you're doing a road trip, when it's continuous, yeah. you, you, you're trying to get somewhere anyway, it's then exhausting. What mm. was good is it was quite a localized trip. Whilst yeah. it was called the Hot Hatch Tour, we were kind of based out the same place for most nights. Yeah. So we kind of went out, filmed helped. all day and came back. So we were much more in control of our, our time. And, and, and as you say, we had a lot more freedom with the, cause it was a, coming what, October? So the days, yeah. was light was starting to fade. Mm. The weather was starting to come and in. And it was freezing. And it was freezing. But one thing which I think was very important, which I think we did well, which I'd be interested to find out whether people enjoyed, is all the other road trips we've done, mm -hmm. we've all been on and we've all put out as much content as we could possibly do. And we've all been filming on the same days, trying to come up with different narratives, blah, 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 blah. blah. Which is the hardest thing. The the hardest thing when you're all doing the same thing in the same place especially the sort of you know london to freaking monaco because yeah. this is a straight road trip but but for this time we specifically went can we do something different here and can we just do one video each day but with all of us yeah, yeah. you know um 
contributing to the content. Thank you, contributing to the content. Yeah, like you're monsters kicking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, you know, and I think personally that's why it works so well. Yeah. And I know a lot of people were like, I did see some comments saying, "Oh, you should each film your own video and, and upload your own narrative," but. I don't think that works so well on such a small localized trip. No, I think it does work well when we've all got new cars, there's excitement around heading down to the south of France or wherever we go for a car event. Then whilst it is tricky for us to each come up with a different narrative, there is still that excitement there. Exactly. Both with ourselves, but also from a content upload point of view that of course it's perfectly fine for us all to upload our different angle from the day in our each different cars but for something like the hot hatch tour it just felt right and uh i'm going to credit you because it was your idea to do all of the alternate <laughs> filming which worked well, amazingly. i wanted to bring it up but, you know. <laughs> but i think that it really opens doors for us to now treat our tours to three six nine or twelve day trips where we can alternate content and each upload that's exactly it that's exactly it. you know we we, we have been talking ever since the hot hatch tour we have been talking about how to follow up with it i feel like it will have to forever be called the hot hatch tour <laughs> it doesn't matter what we're in but it's yeah. now like that's become the brand name now hot yeah. hatch tour yeah but i think obviously our our aim is to try and change up the category of cars so whether it is four by four saloons for me to bring the right car for you to bring the right car would be a huge step in the right direction oh <laughs> uh, as paul already mentioned i think try and do it in those three-day blocks so that we can still you know what the one person uploads each day so you guys can follow the story by jumping between the channels um it gives a different flavor to the editing it gives a different flavor to the storytelling uh, but we're all still involved so the hardest thing right now the hardest thing is finding a time when paul james and i can all do something together for more than three or th for three days it's 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 frustrating it is <laughs> realistically it is going to be around top marks in april isn't it <laughs> which is ridiculous it kind of defeats it, the whole purpose it, but it fits in nicely but you never know like there could be diary changes somewhere yes. along the way fundamentally in april there's always the top marks monaco post pre-european road trip type situation yeah. which i'm sure will be happening in some form and i'm sure we'll each be hitting the road at some point whether we cross paths or not around the geneva time exactly exactly so i definitely want to do something it's in the plans but the last one took about six months we first started talking about it during the corsica sardinia trip yeah april last year and we did it in october so so bear with us mm. uh, we're working on it and as soon as we find a chance we will do it if you would like to help us out with further planning on something like this and you are on social media please tag <laughs> netflix <laughs> so we can get this sponsored <laughs> very good point netflix i do love netflix i have a remote somewhere or with... like any other of the streaming services Basically, like, any like whatever big money just give us lots of money is <laughs> yeah. essentially what we're trying to yeah, ask this much longer we'll pay for it <laughs> <laughs> so i guess that neatly brings us on to my final topic for today's podcast which is just about road trips in general we just talked about the potential hot hatch tour but also geneva and sort of top marks monaco we we really haven't oh at least i don't think we have this is awkward if you haven't invited me uh put in place any plans around top marks yet <laughs> 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 we had that epic road trip which was far too short we all exhausted ourselves last year doing Corsica which and one? Sardinia oh, Red Crew versus Orange Red Crew Red Crew versus oh, Orange yeah. Crew which was literally just exhausting so I think maybe we'll try and be a bit more sensible with our <laughs> logistics this year but let's get ferries everywhere yeah <laughs> in the middle of the night <laughs> and only spend four hours on each island um, but, but that for sure will be something um, what else have you got coming up have you got any big road trips not Ooh, flying but any big road trips road trips planned I would love to do something around Geneva. I don't know what that is yet, but obviously with the incoming new daily M3 replacement, whatever that bra, is. Bra, bra, bra. Prop C63. Um, <laughs> I do want to take that on a road trip. Okay. Because one of the highlights that I had in 2017 was taking my M3 up to the North Coast Yes, 500. that was awesome. I do remember those. Videos. It was utterly incredible. And I think that this drifting stuff is going to take me quite far around the uk so i'm really looking forward to exploring new parts of the uk towns cities countryside and hopefully tracks to practice and continue developing my drifting stuff a road trip that i really want to do is the west coast of america oh oh trying talk to, to me <laughs> trying to find a car that is already out there and 
Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. Yeah. But when I was in uh, LA in October or November, which I know that you're incredibly jealous about, so I'll keep this quite short and sweet. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine out there that drives an F-Type uh, V8. I know who you're talking all about. All-wheel drive. And he is so... <laughs> all-wheel drive. Go! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, Kevin was super keen yeah. about taking a couple of cars and, and doing a road trip. So... Can I just say... Uh, might be controversial. There is something Go called Mod Borelli USA, which does <laughs> happen in October, and is usually around the west coast of America. John Modbull. Um, I see you, John. I see you, John. <laughs> but no, I, yeah, that, that is one trip which I think... I still want to do coast to coast as well. Oh, yeah. I that, still want to do coast to coast. That is bucket list stuff. Why don't you come to Car Week this year? That is a good come to, shout. Come because you went to Monterey, but you went yeah. to see Wales. <laughs> um, you can see Money Wales instead during August. Come to Car Week. I know. I need to get to because then you're up in that kind of ev- part of the world every year. I yeah. try and come, and the flights are too Book expensive. Book it now. <laughs> Book it now. <laughs> They're still too expensive. <laughs> it's the most expensive trip yeah. of the year. It's literally about seven grand for one week, which is brilliant. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, any, anything else? So yes, Geneva. I will be in Geneva in a very yeah. exciting car. So oh. feel free to get involved. Oh. Um, is it a V12? No, it's V8 T. Um, <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, uh, any, anywhere else? You haven't got anything else planned or plugged in yet? Um, good, good topic if, if Yeah, I, as I saw you typing this out pre-podcast, I was actually going road trips. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't got any road trips lined up. No, um, but no doubt there will be something okay, around Goodwood, we're, we're, Fe- Goodwood Festival. Yeah, speak. we're far away. I, I mean... We're far off the road trip season, which really kicks off, I think, in April with the Top Marks trip. There might be a cheeky Geneva one, but previous yeah, years we've yeah. flown in and out. So, yeah. so uh, there might be a cheeky one, but but I think the first big ones will be in April. And then from there, it usually mm. uh, descends into pure chaos and madness. Um, but anyway, that clearly was a pointless uh, topic to throw I've got on a topic to the end. That we could talk about. Oh, we've got three minutes. Go for it. Where did the name podcast come from? Ah, interesting. You should ask. Basically, I don't know. <laughs> Like it's weird. I was I was driving here going podcast. podcast. No, but 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 who I, came up with that name? Let's Google it because I did actually know somebody asked me. You knew, day, yeah, yeah. Pod- and you forgot. Yeah, Surely yeah. that's information that would stay in your brain. No, like that's that's cause pub it's, quiz stuff. It's kind of random. I mean, <clears> I'm typing, oh, there's no internet. no internet connection. I've killed turn, it from uploading turn, a video. Turn my Wi-Fi back on. <laughs> um, it's because Tony's got really dodgy Wi-Fi. Oh, uh, has he? It really like always sends me a weird. He's got a whole pingy. new showroom, but he hasn't sorted Wi-Fi out. Still hasn't moved into a showroom as well. Uh, Every time I go down there, it's closed. Tony, right. Tony, right here we go. Come on, podcast. podcast. Did, okay. Yeah, uh, where did the name come from? Podcast. The, the word, word. Oh, oh, here we go. go on, read it out, the word originated as a portmanteau <laughs> of iPod, iPod and a, broadcast. Oh. Uh, does Apple own the word podcast? podcast? <laughs> Probably. They own everything else, including our bank details, which have been hacked. <laughs> <laughs> podcast is an iPod thing. Wow. I did think I did think that pod could have come from iPod. Amazing, because realistically, <laughs> this podcast is like the least available platform it's on is an iPod. Mm. Do iPods still oh, exist? I'm so hungry. Yeah. Oh. Can, can you buy an iPod Shuffle? Must be able to buy some. iPod Classic? Classic? Again, it's... Got a laptop right here. <laughs> Apple. Uh, can't be asked. Do you know what? That this is actually the reason why I brought this up because I Gone. missed I missed Tech Corner in, oh. <laughs> in your podcasts. If you remember, <laughs> I don't think anyone will remember the early podcast of which Paul was a guest. We had Tech Corner uh, when Joel was still working here. A lot of you've been asking, by the way, about Joel. Um, Joel and I always had a short term agreement. It was a six month opportunity or position that I was looking to fill. He filled it for six months. It was brilliant. It was great. But that was always the plan. I just needed some help over the busy spring and summer period. Um, Anyway, so yeah, we had a section which was like Tech Corner, which is like a chance for me and Joel basically to try and get free gear. So we were like, if you send us that drone, we'll talk about it on the podcast. Oh, oh I see. Yeah, that was I the, see. That's that was how the you aim. engineered it in. Because but also because I am a camera nerd, let's face yeah, it. So yeah. I do like to talk about that kind of stuff. But. Yeah. Anyway, that rounds up our episode of Behind the Glass. Paul, thank you very much for coming on and being a guest. Hugely exciting news being announced today or last week or last month, whenever this goes live. Today. Uh, about Paul's life. Yeah. Um, so I hope you guys have enjoyed 
enjoyed it make sure to head over to his various channels to follow him make sure to subscribe to the behind the glass youtube channel if you want to watch these episodes make sure to also subscribe on soundcloud.com forward slash seen through glass and itunes podcast if you want to listen to us and final words from paul i was just going to say click that little bell so you get the notification if you subscribe to behind the glass that's it's why he's important. got three times more subscribers than i do <laughs> <laughs> catch up with you guys very very soon bye bye